Hello, everyone. I think we had a super exciting Robotaxi Day yesterday, but there was some disappointment and some Wall Street analysts, as expected, say it was a failure. So what are we looking at and where do we go from here? I want to give you a quick take here, live and later not live, on the analysis what's going to happen. For me, this event was really a tale of two cities. The first city is a five-year city of the faithful, which includes me and probably you. The faithful who believe that Elon is going to build the future and Tesla is going to build the future. For the faithful in the city, we were very excited because we saw the robo-taxi. It's looking amazing. It makes total sense. I'm not going to go into the technology specs, but the lightness of it, the low cost of production, it makes total sense that Tesla can quickly manufacture millions of these things. And it's also clear that FSD is coming along. It was super impressive. Everything is beautiful. Then there's the other city. I call it the three-month city of Wall Street. So let's begin with that one. What did the people in the three-month city of Wall Street think about the event? And I can simulate them. I know how they think. And from that perspective, it was a bad event. It was actually my bad case scenario in the video yesterday where I said, well, if this event turns out to be totally fluffy, no timelines, no concrete uh, meat for what's going to happen, it's going to be very bad. And the stock is going to tank over 5%. That's what I said. And that's exactly what we're looking at right now. In a way, yesterday was really the worst case of the bad scenario that I lined, outlined from a Wall Street perspective, because we didn't see any hard catalyst in the next six to 12 months. There was no announcement of anything believable. We just heard very fluffy Elon saying, well, 2025, he thinks we're going to launch in California and Texas robotaxis with model Y and 3. But I mean, Elon has said that since 2016, so no one is going to believe it. Now, of course, we know with every year where Elon is wrong, the probability he's right the next year goes up exponentially because we are on this development track. I'm not saying it's impossible that Model 3 and Y get online FSD robo taxi wise next year. I just don't think it's likely. I think it's going to be delayed another two years or one year. But even if it happens, it's going to be marginal on the revenue side. Uh, the 2027 timelines for production of the robo taxi, I don't think the robo taxi hardware or production timeline matters at all because it's all a complete dependency on FSD being live. So the question is not when can we manufacture the robotaxi, because even without the robotaxi hardware, we would be fine. It's about FSD and when we can actually order these things as Uber competitors. From an optimist perspective, and you know I'm very bullish on the robot future, it's the same thing. We didn't hear anything concrete. It looked all cool. It was all remotely operated. So we know they're on the right track but there is no timeline. So that was very disappointing. For the worst case, for the stock worst case, that means it's not an unlikely scenario that the stock is going nowhere until 2027. There is just no catalyst. Now, there is the whole core business and the EVs, and I think Tesla is in a, very, in a much stronger position than people understand in the next two years. But this is short-term and mid-term frustrating on a stock price level. I think we see a bottom, potential bottom of 140, as we saw last uh, this year. And the top, I mean, there's strong resistance at 260. Worst case, we are hovering around 140 and 260 until 2027. That's not very exciting from a return perspective. Now, as I mentioned, there's a lot of additional upside surprises built into the business outside FST and Optimus in that time frame, cheaper models, OEMs are imploding. They need to do deals with Tesla. So there can stuff can happen. But on these core super growth drivers, FSD and Optimus, eh, that was disappointing on a short-term level. Now, let's leave the city, the three-year city of uh, three-month city of Wall Street, and go into the five-year city of the faithful. What do we see there? Nothing in this event changed my price target of $5,000 by 2030. The question is not if we get there for me. The question is do we get there in an extreme hockey stick situation or more gradually, which I would prefer. 
I think gradually is not going to happen. I think we are going to flatline for a long time, which means there will be a much stronger forcing function to the upside in two years or something, three years. In fact, the event made me more bullish now because Elon was incredibly calm and confident. I don't know if you noticed that. The way he stood there and said his things, I've never seen him like that. He seemed like maybe he was on some form of new drug. But to me, he seemed very calm and confident, um, happy. So maybe that's the politics, who knows? But I think he sees his empire growing. He sees the extreme AI superiority that Tesla is building. He sees how the competition is completely getting eliminated, eviscerated. Um, and uh, I think he was very confident, which makes me confident here in order, uh, in, in terms of the bet, uh, the five-year bet. Now, Optimus, I think it will happen in Elon's timeline. You know that I think Elon is actually too conservative on Optimus. I think 2026 will see broader deployment, commercial deployment of Optimus. I think Elon is a little behind his own timeline that will happen in the future because the pressure on Tesla to generate a commercial Optimus will be higher than he thinks from competitors. And he will get very annoyed by people getting excited about figure one and other competitors. And that will make him get more aggressive on it. And Optimus rollout is so much easier than FSD, right? You don't need a perfect robot. You just need something that works somehow. And you can sell a million of these things to consumers. And you can sell hundreds of thousands into pilots with commercial. So Optimus is a de facto uncapped market potential. I think it's unlimited. Uh, I think in the midterm, it's a $20 trillion opportunity, but in the long term, it's completely unlimited. It's a different type of thing. Totally agree with Elon. And it's huge. And at the moment that starts working and you have the first 100,000, first million optimists out, Wall Street will understand this. There will be a forcing function into infinity if this happens. And this will happen in the next five years. Now, in the city, in the five-year city of the faithful, where we understand these strategic, civilizationally transforming things that are happening. One argument against it is always, what about the competition, right? And the competition, so I will make an extra video on the competition, but let me just say a few things. Number one, Waymo is a joke. People don't understand it. The fact that Waymo drives around out there and it works, it's a joke. They constantly have interventions, secret hidden interventions. There's humans sitting there steering this thing. It's super constrained. They have made basically no progress in the last five, six years. The hardware is a joke. They have LiDAR and all these things. I completely discount Waymo. It's not a competitor. Cruise doesn't even exist anymore. The Chinese, who knows? But I will get to the Chinese in a second. Figure one. I don't know too much about that company. Their demos are very impressive. I'm not too impressed by what I've seen of the CEO. He doesn't strike me as a technically very savvy engineer, which he has to be if he wants to win. Um, so all the other robots I've seen, I don't see how anyone can compete with Tesla on the robot side. The Chinese EVs, I thought, oh, the Chinese EVs are coming. Well, it's very clear that Chinese EVs are incredibly powerful, strong, cost efficient and make tremendous progress. They are a threat. But I think this threat will be limited to China and Asia. I think politically, what you see in the United States, once Trump wins, which he very likely will, there will be very anti-China you know, blockades. China is not going to swamp the market with EVs anytime soon. And in Europe, also not. This is an existential fight for survival. And the world is getting more nasty the US and Europe will shut down and fend the Chinese off for a long time with unfair methods like tariffs. And we don't forget Tesla is a local manufacturer in both instances, right? They are German and they are American. So they will be well positioned. And I think the European and American competition on the EV side will get eviscerated. I think the OEMs are going out of business before 2030, nearly all of them. Uh, or have to strike some, you know, extreme deals with Tesla, where Tesla starts taking over basically Volkswagen and Ford and all these things, either through acquisitions 
or by replacing the entire drivetrains and letting them just do the interior and exterior. So there is no, they don't have a chance, right? Tesla has too much scale, too much technologically uh, technological supremacy, and they have to strike these deals or go out of business or get acquired if Tesla wants them, especially the higher price ones. So, so I think, and that's also true for semi, semi. So I don't think there's any competition here on all fronts. Um, and on Optimus, I mean, think about it. Against all the other companies, Teslas will have an insurmountable AI manufacturing and marketing mode, which will quickly translate into economies of scale where no one can compete anymore. Like even if there would be a robotic company that is better than Tesla in the beginning, they can copy them and knock them out. And uh, I don't think you know competition will drive down prices too much. People underestimate how huge these modes are. So what's the big picture here? I believe this will 20x by 2030, but I'm bearish or neutral for the next 18 months, which is a long time, maybe even 24 months, where this could, you know, it could be that in 24 months, or let's say 18 months from now, we look back and the stock is at 220, where it is now. That is absolutely a possibility. So we have to dig in and be prepared. This could be very boring in the, in the midterm. If you have patience, you can stay in and accumulate when it drops. Um, but if you need the money uh, in the next 18 months, do not bet on the stock. That is what I think. Now, I want to take a step back. I actually saw some commentary yesterday from some very smart YouTubers. I think we also, besides all these stock discussions, which are important, you know, we want to benefit from Tesla's rise. But from a civilizational perspective, we just have to be in awe what Elon and the team and Tesla and also his other companies are doing. They are building entire segments of a new civilization here. It is crystal clear that this is going to happen now in the next five years. There is no way around that. The question whether it happens in 2026 or 27 or then in 28 if they're delayed, who cares in the big scheme of things? You know, would we have been mad at Henry Ford if he would have been delayed two years? He probably was delayed two years. No one even remembers. It's transformative. And that's why everyone is so excited and is becoming such a fan of Elon. Not everyone, but let's say half of the population. Uh, because we need these pioneers that do these very big things. And civilization and building the future civilization is really my personal passion. It's my absolute top priority. And I see it as my purpose to help do this in any way I can. Elon is the central beachhead in our imagination that shows that this is possible. What we have to do is support Elon, make sure this all happens. But ideally, we have to become Elons ourselves. Or we have to empower others to do that. And we have to go beyond transportation and AI and robots. We have to go into healthcare, into education, into culture, into governance. We have to do that. And someone has to stand up and start doing that. And I want to be part of the solution. And I hope you will too. I will actually launch a civilization series where we discuss this a little more in depth. And I will refer always back to Tesla and Elon to show how it's being done in these segments and you know, evaluate if we can learn from that and bring it into even more important areas of human life. So I hope uh, you know, I can keep it exciting and keep you guys engaged. Leave me your comments, what you think, and see you very soon.